How have you been, Golden? I have been good. Oh yeah! East Combat, yeah! <laughs> We're gonna like fly and shit. <laughs> yep. Some more planes to fly around and blow shit up. I should also uh. Cause I always what was the one you was playing last time? Um, last week. Yeah, the last Ace Combat game you were playing was because like, I can tell this is a different one. Uh, for some reason it's not letting me. There we go. Thank you. Cause I wanted to be able to. Okay, it's not letting me do that. Okay, fine. I'm about you. Why won't it let me move the screen? Or move the window? Do I really have to do this? Alright, I guess I have to do it like that. Or actually, let's squeeze it in a little bit more. There we go. No, because I wanted to I wanted to be able to um oh great, I forgot to There. Alright. Just getting set up, and yeah. yeah. Is this a um? Is this the sequel to the previous Ace Combat game you were playing? Are you talking about um? Arrow Fighters Assault. Oh, are they not the same then? No, Arrow Fighters Assault okay. was uh was an N sixty four game. Ace Combat started out on the um. Let me go ahead and turn the volume down on that. It's always a thing like, you got to keep in mind of. I'm probably misremembering, but I thought you were playing an Ace Combat game a while back. Oh no, you're fine. Um, Ace Combat started around the PS, uh, the PlayStation era. Briefly, it went to Xbox 360 on the sixth, and a bunch of things in which, if I, <laughs> if I, if I lay down so much detail, I'm gonna bore you to tears with it. Oh, they have fucking live action cutscenes for this. No, those are nice. D those are CG. Really? So that's actually pretty good. The way the sun was like, like shining down between the fingers. <laughs> also, I just saw a steamroller there. And I'm just like, is that your plane? I don't think that's how that works. No. <laughs> I mean, if you if a human being was capable of flying a steamroller, then all the wars would be over. Because who'd fight that? Yeah, really. <laughs> Mysterious lady, I'm going blind. Well, so where did Riley go? I think his internet may have crashed. It happens. Was JJ Abrams involved? <laughs> <laughs> <and Vol> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would just need more lens flares. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even seen any of G.J. Abrams movies except for Cloverfield, and even I know that. You guys know what would be the perfect meme game to stand up there with things like Goat Simulator and other games like that? What? Just Lens Flare Simulator, or God Rays Simulator, and you just fuck with how the sun looks in a game. <laughs> also, yes, <laughs> Retro... That's it. Also, yes, Retro Gamer Kevin, Assault Horizon was ass garbage. It's insulting. <laughs> now tell us how you really feel. No, because, okay, so when it comes to flying games, what do you do? You fly in and you lock on in your enemy and everything and you fire. And you have to, like, strategize your movements, right? Assault Horizon, most notoriously called dogfight mode, is something that is required for you to have because it's scripted like that. And it automatically, like, chases your enemy and you just have to shoot them down as soon as they're targeting the red circle. It takes it, half the gameplay away. Yeah! It's just, it takes away the fun. It's, it holds your hand so badly. Like, that reminds me of when they revealed that you were going to be able to fly on the back of dragons in Skyrim, but then it was just hyper-scripted and you kind of just had to wait for the dragon to be where you needed it to be. Mm -hmm. Which defeated the whole purpose of flying a fucking dragon. Like, the strange thing about piloting vehicles in video games, if there are any devs here listening, is that we want to control the vehicle. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 all of it? Do... Sorry, go on. Go ahead. No, no, go, on. go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say, if they want to do... If they want to have that, have it be for a tutorial. After that... 
let the player have as much fun as they can with flying a plane or a dragon. You don't have to hold their hand completely. Because, like, fucking the, the last time I remember being in a situation where I was basically a turret while somebody else was flying the vehicle was in Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. Yeah. Ten fucking years ago. <laughs> Like, fucking, they had these small moments in the space battle missions where you controlled Clank on this turret on the back of the ship when enemies <laughs> were coming in from behind. What it was just like... It was, like it was pretty neat. Ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, it was like, the, yeah, those sections were pretty neat, but they were really small parts of that game, and I'm just like, all these years later, and I've never been in a in a situation that was quite as railroaded as that. And again, there was those tiny segments in a situation where you could otherwise control the ship. Even though it itself was on... It was basically roller coaster mode, you flew around and shot stuff, but your direction was predetermined by the whole thing, but you still had some amount of control, so you could right, dodge projectiles and shit. Bitch. Like, dogfight mode sounds like a nightmare, because what happens if the AI decides that you don't need to get out of the way of those bullets that are slowly turning your wings into Swiss cheese? It's like, uh, like I mentioned this earlier in my stream, you probably weren't there, Logic. Uh, there's a reviewer, I can't pronounce his name, it's like a Bo Shoes or something like that. He did a marathon review of a couple of Ace Combat games, and when he talked about um, Assault Horizon... He talks about like the fun things you like. Uh, he loves about the first two games, like maneuver with different kinds of things with your squadron. Keep them in the red circle. Fly into dangerous, phenomenal, like dangerous, ridiculous missions. Keep them in the red circle. You know, do something like that. Oh, I get it. It's a um, it's a comparison. <laughs> yeah, it's a comparison. Things like keep them in the red circle. <laughs> keep them in that the red circle. <laughs> That's not fun. I don't know why, but when I when I first heard you when I first heard you say keep him in the red circle, I actually felt a fucking double depresso shot of sad hit what? my heart because I'm just like that's pain. That sounds like pain, literally pain. Espresso, <laughs> espresso. <laughs> it's like all of this cool shit that you could do in the other games, and now it's like it's ra oh, it's, shit. it's railroaded. I almost flew like, to that crash plane. Damn, I gotta be careful. <laughs> He would have had the last laugh. Fuck you. Actually, I do go to wonder, like, is there a game that has what I like to call the time crisis feel, where you're kind of just on a rail that takes you around the whole mission and all you have to do is point and shoot? Is stuff like that fun anymore? Oh, like, uh, you're talking about thing? the rail shooter that goes all action! Yeah. It, I think it was fun for its time. I can't say it now. For how it's aged, because it's been a while since I played it, but it was fun as a kid. Um, it's well, the, no, it's, my, my, good. Like what I meant is like what I meant was: is there anything like that now? Like, is there are there any modern rail shooters? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I wouldn't mind if I see it come back and they try to like reinvent the wheel with a rail shooter. Um, like if they do. You know, good best of luck to it. You know, I'm always open to seeing whatever like uh, reinventions of previous like iterations of uh, games were made before. You know, but I digress. I just, I just thought of a joke that's pretty mean. What? The closest thing we've had to rail shooters in recent time has been Telltale Games. I've heard the name. I don't know what it is. It's oh, the games, bitch there. like it's the games where your choices matter about as much as your hair color, <laughs> <laughs> because you're gonna get stabbed either way. <laughs> um, if you remember correctly, this is the. Uh, I think I could be. No, wait, no, never mind. I'm confusing it for another game, uh, game company. Wait, did they make uh, Dark Souls and Elden Ring, or is that somebody else? No, from Soft made the Souls games, and that like the stuff they did is immaculate until you get to Sekiro and Dark Souls Two, okay. which like people genuinely didn't generally people generally didn't like Dark Souls Two, and to me Sekiro is very like it stands out from the rest, but not in a way that I'm particularly fond of because it's just like you're locked into the samurai class and 
Oh, son of a bitch. Like, stealth is actually viable in a FromSoft game for a change, but it's like, it's it's very different. And I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like one of those people who's like, change is bad. <laughs> Even though, you know, I didn't like Halo 4 and 5, and I only like Halo Infinite because it looks the best out of all the Halo games. But it's like, in the, the whole thing with Sakura is because it was... It was so different that when I play games like Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring, and then I look at a game like Sekiro, and I'm just like, these are made by the same people? Really? What? That was a massive tangent to go on, but no, the Telltale Games people. Like, the reason I made the joke that they're the closest thing to a rail shooter we've had in a while is because it doesn't really matter what you do, you're going to end up in the same place anyway. Because Telltale Games was more interested in the illusion of choice more than actually delivering a unique like gameplay session out of your choices. See, random question. Well received. Like Telltale's Game of Thrones has a sequence where regardless of what you do, you get stabbed in the neck and die. If you appease this guy, if you argue with him, if you stand up to him, if you be the best, just best boy, you get stabbed regardless. And I feel like that is just that is telling when it comes to how interested Telltale games are actually interested in giving you a story where you choose your own adventure. So I was asked a question by Ryza. Have I played any of the South Park games? No, I have not. And somebody else uh, mentioned something about Black Griffin. I think it's because Black Griffin and, and Prince... What, uh, Black Griffin was on um, America's Got Talent. Oh, shit. Yeah, so Gabriel is, Brown literally was on stage performing something on national television. Yeah. Holy fuck, dude. Did he do good? I I, I don't wouldn't know. know. For sure, but I've heard people say he did pretty good. Fuck yeah. I've known this guy for like five seconds, but fuck yeah. He's <laughs> he's known for Proud to be a Brony. It's like one of the very first like Brony fan so, songs. Basically what he did is he had the judges pick out some cards of songs and then impressions for characters that he could do while singing. Oh. Um, like he got, uh, what was it? Shooting Star with SpongeBob and oh, he had one with Simon. And he had, did an uh, almost perfect impression of Simon to his face. <laughs> to Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell, you know you've done right. Cowell. That's, Cowell. That, that's cool. Let, that's... How do we zoom Again, in? I've known this guy for like, what is it now, 15 seconds, but that's um, cool. Uh, he was so okay, seamless, also too. Know... Oh, sorry, well, sorry uh, Riley. I was just saying that his he was so seamless trans... Uh, between transitioning between songs and characters and shit. <laughs> can we get some like? Anyways, can, we, can we get a hashtag Black Griffin hype in chat? <laughs> uh, Logic, if you also don't know, he was the one that did that collaboration with Apple Bloom's voice actress for "Beat It." The more oh shit, you that know, guy. Yes, I I know that video. That um, Black that Griffin was like year one there. of me in this horse people fandom. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, sorry for the interruption for a bit. If if Vlad were here if Vlad were here Ah, I see. Yeah. It'll well, click together eventually. Perhaps one of us could summon him. <laughs> I mean, I no if idea. you guys want to, you can, like, ding him saying, hey, I'm playing Ace Combat and I'm flying the A-10. He'll just come in and go, like, yeah! Current target is on rails, but there's still military vehicles and anti-air weapon rounds. Oh. Current I will target. leave that to the discretion of whomever, because I'm, I don't know, I don't want to be the guy that he messages back with, I'm getting busy, I'm working, huh? I'll do it. I've had people yell at me before, I've been used to it. <laughs> I think everybody's had people. <laughs> Don't! Why did I do that? No. I meant just the fucking gun. Oh my god, guys. So, you know the you know the Skyrim granny? Yeah. She's calling on Bethesda to hurry up and release the Elder Scrolls 6 because quote, she wants to play it before she dies. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's not gonna happen. Then. Todd Howard is too far up his own ass. I mean, ah, there mm. we go. Okay. I mean, it'd be nice if they actually did release the game before she passes, but I've lost faith in Todd Howard, and I don't even play Bethesda games. Oh wait. There we go. You don't play Bethesda games? I'm not a big gamer, Logic. Well, yeah, but like, not even Skyrim, not even no? once. <laughs> Dude, I'm a literal fucking newbie when it comes to games like this. Like, <laughs> what? Are you really that surprised? Kinda. Everyone's well. Logic, you want most know people I know have played Skyrim like once. No, oh have. shit! You want to know? Ooh, you want to know the <sighs> biggest? You want to know the only game I've ever fully played that I guess I would consider I played in whole that is actually recent? Undertale. That's how sad I am. Oh. Oh, here we go. Oh. That reminds me. I was watching a fucking. <laughs> Oh, I was shit. watching okay, and... a zero punctuation video. Well, it wasn't zero punctuation, it was extra punctuation. About why Yahtzee never did a zero punctuation on Undertale. And, you know, the TLDW on that Ooh. is that he didn't do a zero punctuation on Undertale because he couldn't find much Ooh. to say that was bad about it. Which is telling <laughs> about the quality of Undertale. Oh, fuck! I almost hit the telephone cords. <laughs> Because if you really think about it, Undertale is a fucking genius of a game. It is! It, it's, 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 it's just the fans that, like, kind of toxified it. it yeah, yeah. That, definitely. They put, that's kind of that's, true of everything, though. Yeah, that too. It's those who say, oh, you have to do it the pacifier round. You have to do it like this. You have to do it like that. <laughs> Suck <laughs> my <laughs> dick! Exactly. <laughs> Also, also Golden, I'm gonna call it the pacifier route from now on. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you're gonna fucking use that shit on me hard, aren't you? No, I'm gonna use it in general. That shit's funny. <laughs> well, seriously, Whoa! You Jesus! Oh! What <laughs> I don't know! Well, oh, okay. there's some I, air combat. The, okay. For anyone in the Twitch chat that missed that, I think Golden just used one of those, like, seismic charges from the Slave 1 from Attack of the Clones. <laughs> and it blew up in his face. Because that's the only way I can explain the big blue boom that just went off. <laughs> it was just... Like, two feet in front of you. By this point, Bliss is going to have some serious competition with her jump scares. Oh god, she's going to scare you with KABOOM! Again. Would... My head cannon is that that blue explosion was bliss. <laughs> <laughs> she snuck into the game just to troll Golden. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I don't mind seeing any more jump scares because there's just some that are funny. Like, one of which is another one that was unexpected, and it was from, um, it was from Jesse. And, like, what hap what just happened? Oh, uh, we got a cutscene. Oh! Wait, are those Ooh. drones? Probably. Probably.